So in the last video, we looked at how the sensitivity list can be used to manage flow in a process statement. In this video, we'll look at the weight statement, which is the more appropriate, more versatile, and more useful way to manage flow in a process. So we have four ways in which we can use the weight statement. Um, the weight statement does exactly what it says. It just causes a process to wait. So a weight statement can only be used within the body of a process, and all it does is it causes the process to wait. It's important to understand which uses of the weight statement are synthesizable and which are not, because they do very different things. So the four ways to use the weight statement is the unconditional weight, which is just saying wait, and that's it. Uh, and then there's wait until, which causes us to wait until a certain condition is uh, satisfied, and then go on. And then there's wait on, and after the on keyword, there's usually a list of signals. And then there's the wait for, which causes us to wait for a certain amount of time. The wait for statement is usually seen as a more, more general uh, statement of the unconditional wait statement, where the unconditional wait statement is causing us to wait forever, for infinity. And so in these code snippets, we see all uses of the wait statement being illustrated. So for example, here we see uh, wait until, and the process is going to wait until a clock event happens and clock equals one. In fact, uh, a little bit later, we'll find that this code actually implements a D flip-flop. Flip here we see the unconditional wait, which will cause the process to wait indefinitely. Here we see the wait for statement, which causes the process to wait for a certain amount of time. And here we see the wait on statement, which causes the process to wait until there are changes in the list of signals that follows the on keyword. So what's happening here? What's happening is when we use a process, we can either use a process with a sensitivity list or a process that contains weight statements. We cannot use a sensitivity list in a process with a weight statement. We cannot use weight statements in a process that contains sen a sensitivity list. So they are mutually exclusive. But we will find out shortly that actually nothing that a, uh, a sensitivity list can do cannot be done with a weight statement. So actually, a sensitivity list is just an easier way to write a weight statement. Uh, and the weight statement, all it does is it causes the execution of the process to wait indefinitely. So the proper way to understand how processes are executed and when they are executed is through the weight statements, not through the sensitivity list. There's a couple of rules to understand about how a process is executed, and it's much clearer using weight statements. Uh, the rules are at startup, so when the circuit first starts up, the process executes. So the process always executes at least once when the process starts up. And the second rule is the process always loops. So the process always loops back when it ends it never ever fails to loop back when it reaches the end process statement. So when you reach the end process statement, the process goes back to the process statement and executes again. These are the two rules that you have to know, nothing else. And the third kind of not rule, but it's just something that you can really uh, guess is that the process will freeze at a wait statement. So the process will stop at a wait statement. Why would it stop? Because it's a wait statement. How long? It depends on the kind of wait statement. If it's a wait for statement, it will wait for an, a certain amount of time. If it's a wait until statement, it will wait until the condition is satisfied. If it's a wait on statement, then it will wait until there's an event on any of the signals. And if it's a, an unconditional wait statement, then it will just wait forever. So uh, for example, let's look at uh, the, this process. So this process begins execution uh, at the start of, uh, of, of simulation, and it will give the value, the signal clock, a value of one. And um, 
it will wait for 100 nanoseconds. So for 100 nanoseconds, the uh, signal clock will have a value of one. After 100 nanoseconds have passed, it will move on to the next statement and clock becomes zero. And then it will wait for 100 nanoseconds again. And then it will reach the end of the process. So what does it do at the end of the process? It will always loop back to the beginning. And so it will go to clock equals one, and then it will wait for 100 nanoseconds and so on. So what, what does this piece of code produce? It produces a clock signal whose clock frequency is one over 200 nanoseconds. So the wait for statement is actually very useful in test benches when we want to generate input signals. But be careful because the wait for statement is not synthesizable. This cannot be synthesized. So use it only in test benches. Don't use it in designs or entities that you intend to implement on hardware. Let's look at this piece of code. So in this piece of code, we have a, a, a signal called reset. At start of operation, we have the value of reset being assigned to one. So the signal reset will have a value of one. And then we wait for 200 nanoseconds. And so 200 nanoseconds pass. And then we move on to the next statement, which is reset equals zero. And so reset becomes zero. And then we reach an unconditional wait, which causes the process to freeze forever until the end of simulation. So reset will, be, will become zero until the end of simulation. So this helps us generate um, a non-periodic or aperiodic input signal for test benches. Again, the uh, wait for statement is not synthesizable and the unconditional wait statement as a special case of the wait for statement, it's basically wait forever, is also unsynthesizable. So let's look at um, this piece of code, for example. Uh, when we start execution, we hit this wait uh, statement and so we freeze we don't do anything we wait at this statement at the beginning of the simulation and so this statement causes us to wait until something happens what is that something a clock event and a clock equaling one clock event and clock equals one we will find out a little bit later means a positive edge of the clock and so only when we reach the positive edge of the clock will we execute this statement which is q equals to d so this basically implements a D flip-flop. Notice that once we execute Q equals to D, we reach end process. And so we loop back again and we go back to the wait until statement. Most critically, um, if you look at the wait on statement, it's very important to understand this. What's gonna happen here is that we are gonna execute this process for, uh, you know, when we first start simulation. So all of this code will execute first. It really doesn't matter what the code is for now, right? And then we re reach this statement and we freeze at this statement and we wait on a change in any of these signals. Change here means event. If there's an event on any, on any of these signals, we will allow the process to continue working. When this happens, the process will reach the end process statement and we'll loop back to the beginning of the process and execute again. So what's happening here is that we execute once at the beginning of simulation, and then from then on, we wait for a change or a, an, an, an event on a list of signals. This is actually doing exactly the same thing that a sensitivity list containing these signals would do. Because we said the sensitivity list is gonna execute, a process with the sensitivity list is gonna execute once at the beginning, and then it will wait for an event on any of the signals in the sensitivity list before it executes again, which this does exactly. And notice that the wait on statement has to be at the end of the process so that it allows the process to execute once at the beginning of simulation. And so using a wait on statement at the end of the process is exactly the same as using a sensitivity list. They do exactly the same thing. So one thing I have to uh, point out is the effect that wait statements have on, uh, on events and transactions. Because actually the wait statement helps us illustrate the difference between an event and a transaction. And again, there's a bunch of rules here that you have to understand. One, a signal assignment within a process is a transaction. It is not an event. The signal does not take the new value. 
It just is scheduled to take that new value. So when you say A is equal to B within a process, A does not take the value of B. It is just scheduled to take that value. Rule number two, transactions become events only when we reach a wait statement. So at any wait statement, transactions become events. So all the transactions that you had scheduled become actual events when you reach a wait statement. It doesn't really matter what kind of wait statement. As soon as you reach a wait statement, transactions become events. And rule number three, if you reach the end of the process without seeing a wait statement, all transactions that have not turned into events are trashed. They are thrown away. So let's look, for example, at uh, this piece of code. So this piece of code uh, gives a bus called DN different values. And of course, this is not synthesizable because it uses weight uh, 4. But DN is going to have the values 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? According to, to what's happening here, it's going to change from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. So what's going to happen is when we start execution, DN will take the value of 1, and we will wait for 200 nanoseconds, and then it will take the value of 4, but uh, of 2. But notice one thing. What's happening here at this statement is not that DN takes the value of 1, Dn is only transacted to take the value of 1. Dn takes the value of 1 when we reach this wait statement, which in this case we're not actually going to notice because the wait statement comes really comes uh, directly after the assignment line. So after another 200 nanoseconds, we update the value to 3. And then we wait for another 200 nanoseconds. And then we have this statement, which is dn is equal to the value of 4. So what happens here? What happens here is that we are introducing a transaction to give dn the value of 4. But this is not going to happen. This is not going to turn into an event. So after 200 nanoseconds have passed, we still don't know what happened yet. This is not going to turn into an event until we have a wait statement, until we meet the next wait statement. So what's the next statement? End process. So because we meet end process before we meet a new wait statement, this transaction, this transaction is thrown away. It doesn't happen. And we loop back to the beginning of the process and DN is transacted to have the value of 1. And we immediately meet this wait for statement and thus dn becomes 1. And so what's going to happen here is that the input is going to loop between the values 1, 2, and 3, never ever seeing the value 4 because 4 is a transaction that never gets the chance to become an event. So if you go back to the last video and you look at um, when we said transactions turn into events, we said that transactions turn into events at the end of the process. But that was only because we were in a process with a sensitivity list. And as I said, a process with a sensitivity list is a process with a wait on statement at the end of the process. So it's not because we met the end of the process in a process with a sensitivity list, it's because we met a wait statement at the end of the process. An actual end of the process leads to transactions that have not been fulfilled being thrown away. That's the reality of the situation. So let's look at this code, for example. In this code, um, and by, by, the, by the way, the conf standard logic vector function, all it does is it transforms the value here, this integer value, into a standard logic vector of length 4 and assigns it to uh, the bus dn. So what's happening here is that dn will take the value of 1, 200 nanoseconds will pass, then um, a transaction to turn it into 2, but immediately we have a wait statement, so that turns into an event and it becomes 2 and it stays 2 for 200 nanoseconds. And then we have this statement which introduces a transaction to turn dn into 3, but again, immediately a wait statement, and so it turns into 3. We wait uh, for 200 nanoseconds, and then there is a transaction to turn it into 4. But instead of meeting the end of process, we meet an unconditional wait statement. And that unconditional wait statement causes the transaction to execute into a, an event, and dn takes the value of 4. 
And because we have met an unconditional wait statement, dn remains at the value for forever until the end of simulation. And so you can see that the difference between these two code fragments is the last wait statement. This is what caused this statement to become an event. This caused this, caused this transaction to become an event, and thus we saw the value of four here. Whereas here, we met the end of process without the transaction managing to turn into an event, and thus we threw it away. And so the cardinal rules of when transactions turn into, an ev into events is that transactions turn into events when we met, meet a wait statement. Even in a process with a sensitivity list, it's still the same rule because the end of a process is actually a wait statement. It's a wait on statement with the signal list being the sensitivity list. So what's the verdict on wait statements? Um, wait for statements and unconditional wait statements are generally unsynthesizable and should only be used in the test bench. Wait until statements uh, can be used to create loops or uh, flip-flops. But there's, con uh, there's a syntax that is clearer that can do both things. So there's really no reason to use the wait statement to create these things. The wait on statement can be used to create processes that behave as if they have a sensitivity list. But then again, why not use a sensitivity list? So use the wait statement if you are comfortable with it. It gives you a very clear idea of when transactions turn into events, and it can be used to do some cool things. But if you are uncomfortable with it, I'd rather use a process with a sensitivity list and preserve the use of the wait statement to create uh, waveforms only in the test bench.